So today we're fishing an underwater structure and they got lots of reefs out in Pontchartrain now. The basin foundation's really done a good job, correlated with CCA and some other organizations of creating reefs for us. Lots of reefs in the middle of the lake, lots of reefs on the west side of the lake. You gotta check all of those types of spots whenever the fish move into the lake. Right now we're fishing in something that's been here for a long, long time on the eastern end of the lake. It's just a lot of rock rubble. And that's the kind of stuff that just, that provides habitat for speckled trout. They love it. You know, obviously the bridges are great. And the reason why everybody flocks to them is because you can visually see them. So I highly recommend getting on some kind of website, Google Lake Pontchartrain Underwater Obstructions, Reefs, whatever. They got plenty of them in Lake Bourne and log all of them into your GPS. That way you got more spots, you know? And a lot of times we just jump from reef to reef to reef and underwater obstruction and little little uh, aces in the hole that we have. And every once in a while you come across a honey hole like we are right now. Yeah, baby. Watch this here. We got these fish balled up and dialed in using that pink champagne matrix. This is the excellent color and gin clear water. We're just fishing some submerged structure right here in about 12 to 18 foot of water. And you want to just, when you're fishing a lot of rubble, you want to pop it real hard. That way you can hop it over the rubble. That's going to help you out with snags. So I'm going to let it get down to the bottom. Instead of dribbling it real easy, I'm going to pop it hard. Pop, 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 pop. Popping it over this rubble. You're going you're gonna to have to deal with some snags, but by popping it hard, it's going to help you out. Oh, there he was. There he was. Oh, when I bend down like that, that's me letting that lure get back down to the bottom. that pink champagne and it's pristine crystal clear water we the lake always gets its cleanest water around november december i've been finding the last few years that's whenever all of the rivers are at their lowest that saltwater wedge there he is that fish that saltwater wedge comes into the lake good we get that good emerald green water That's an acrobatic dude. He came clean up the water. That's what we're looking for. And again, we're going to go over. You know, we've been showing a lot of bridge videos lately. And the bridges are an excellent place to fish. But we always talk about trying to... What happens is when the word gets out on the bridges, they obviously get very crowded. So you come to these subs, these other sub areas like the wall, all in pollens over there, Lake Catherine, Seabrook, uh, Bayou Thomas, all of that. It's fantastic places, man. And it, so much, so much area just gets neglected. What happens is when these speckled trout move in on a transition for their fall migration into Pontchartrain, and we start catching them on the bridges. It's not just the bridges. They, they, they move into everything. Anything that's a, a suction zone, concrete structures, these old beat up camp pollens that, that litter the eastern end of Pontchartrain. I mean, look at this, guys. I mean, we're just dropping them on the floor. Drop it like it's hot. So don't just get one area in your brain. Whenever you fish in Pontchartrain, you know, a lot of times when we start catching a few fish, my phone will start ringing and emails. What's the bridges doing? What's the bridges doing? I'm like, guys, there's so many other places to fish besides the bridges. Now, I like the bridges a lot. Granted, it's a great place to fish. But I think everybody would have to agree they'd rather catch a few in an area that's not littered with boats than sit there and fight a bunch of boats. And if you're looking to hit a home run, 
you have a lot better chance of doing it whenever you're not around a million boats. Usually when we're killing them on the bridge, it's before the word has gotten out. Now I want you to look at this crab right here coming over the surface. That right there, I ooh, got clobbered. That right there is just, I mean, the lake's just alive. We got crabs, shrimp, everything in the estuary right now. And uh, that's just a good sign. You know, trout, they'll eat crabs. It's not their primary source of food, but whenever you got plenty of crabs, you got plenty of shrimp. Plenty of shrimp equals plenty of fish. It's got a lot going on right now. That one's shaking his head like a speck, but it is a whitey. Now, whiteys have made a very good surgence back in the Pontchartrain Basin this year. No doubt the best white trout season I've seen in probably seven or eight years. I'm guessing white trout need a lot of salt. Are they favorite? All the hurricanes we had this year, they're back. I love that they're back. You know, a lot of people look down upon this fish compared to a speckled trout. It makes no sense why. Speckled trout, white trout, they fillet almost identically. They taste exactly the same. The only thing is everybody says if you freeze white trout or let them sit on the ice for too long, they're a little mushy. I don't disagree with that, but we almost always fillet our fish when we get home. So this is gonna make a fish sandwich. He's got, got a little weight to him. Got a little weight to him. I don't know what this is, guys. Oh, got him foul hooked. That's why he felt so big. We go over that a lot. They feel a lot bigger when you get them in the jugular. Still counts as a catch. That's them investigating the lure. You go to jig it and it gets them. Now, uh, well, as you can see, we got these slicks popping up and I don't typically just run around the lake looking for slicks to tell me where fish are. But what I do find is when we are catching trout really good, nine out of 10 times a slick will pop up very nearby. That's the fish regurgitating when they're in a feeding frenzy. Nice specky. All right, guys, we're gonna go ahead and close it out. We didn't even plan on shooting a Dockside TV here today. We were just simply, we're, our plans are to shoot a Dockside TV today, or were. We just stopped in here waiting for the tide to do something. As we're heading, we're gonna try something else later. Coming here, it's almost every cast. Got another Dockside TV episode. What we did want to go over today was fishing a pink champagne and crystal clear. Uh oh, we almost went out. Fishing the crystal clear water and the pink champagne. Excellent combination. Great wintertime bait. So, if you want to uh, get some, get your hands on some of these, some 3 8 ounce jig heads like we used today, make sure to subscribe to our Matrix Bait Box. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to check out all of our um, fall and wintertime episodes, catching nice speckled trout all across the Gulf Coast. Until next time, good fishing.